Johnson and the FDA announcing that there's now a new vaccine on the market. Um, do we have any idea of how many doses um, South Carolina is going to get? And will this vaccine, this particular brand, be given out to any specific group in our state? Uh, don't know exactly how much we'll get, but the procedure that was established for warp speed from the very beginning was that the states would get their pro rata share of people based on population, people who are 18 and above. We have about 5.2 million people in South Carolina. We have about 4.1 million that are 18 and above. It's not recommended for people younger than that. So I would expect that we would get our pro rata share, which is about one and a half percent. However, uh, what the group is, is doing now is they are taking some of the increase and putting it uh, separately out into the federally qualified health centers, also going to the Department of Defense, the Veterans Department. We had a, uh, a mass vaccine site at the Colonial Arena, I think about a week and a half ago. All of that vaccine came in for those people who were vaccinated that day separately outside of our regular uh, allocation. So we will be getting more. When, when this began, when the Trump administration gave the okay to, to pay for the vaccine being produced by Pfizer and, and Moderna before it had been cleared by the FDA, they built up a stockpile. So we were able to draw from that stockpile starting in December when those vaccines were approved. Johnson & Johnson was not a part of that, so they, are, they have no stockpile at this point. Nevertheless, because of the increase that is, is developed over the months in Pfizer and Moderna, they went from manufacturing about 8.6 million doses a week to now 14 and a half million doses per week. That's why we're getting an increase. We expect an increase for Johnson & Johnson. When it'll arrive, uh, we don't know how much, but it won't be as much as we've, have, have the, the increases we've been getting from the others, but it will be substantial. But we expect, and we were told from the very beginning, that come March, we'll be getting a lot more vaccine than we were getting in December. And in fact, we're about 60% more now than we were getting in December every week. That, that bill was in the House. I think they, uh, they had a hearing and they, they put it on the table until they could get more information about the, the school district's plans for getting vaccinated and the school district's plans for opening the schools up to the parents who wanted their children to be there. But what our point is, our, our approach is, we know it's the older people who are most at risk. 88% of those who have died are 61 years old or over. Uh, the young people, those who are getting sick, are not getting very sick. Some of them don't even know they have it. Maybe you would have it and not even know it. You young, young and healthy people uh, would, do not need to be at, at the top of the list. But uh, what we are attempting to do, rather than try to categorize people in occupations, is we want to get the flow into the arms going as quickly as possible, statewide, everywhere, places like this, purely volunteers, uh, it, the only thing this government sponsored here is, is the vaccine, which is paid for. But our goal is to get everyone a, a shot who wants it at a place where they're comfortable in going to get it. Sometimes it's a little more difficult in some of the rural areas to do that. We're working on with, with churches and other leaders to, to lend their authority to this, this process. The hospitals are going uh, very, very, very well, and we hope it's standing up all about the big pharmacies as well as the independent pharmacies, and we have about 609 of those that are willing and qualified to participate. We hope when that gets going and enough vaccine is coming to supply all of them, that everybody who wants a shot will be able to get one in short order. Just getting a question in actually uh, from a viewer who is watching this live. Uh, the question being, we've heard from many teachers who say they are more than willing to wait their turn but what is your plan for how schools should manage staffing shortages while teachers are out sick or for quarantine for weeks? Um, well, that's the same for every, every, every uh, group uh, that, that is uh, out there. Every occupation has the same problem. The, the House, on the, when they were having their hearing, they had uh, air traffic controllers, the press association, I think the federal judges, uh, uh, all sorts of occupations have the, the, are facing the same challenges. What we know from the, the spread from students in the schools is as if there's little, if any, spread from the students. 
Now, at the beginning of this, back in January and February, we were worried about what would happen when schools opened and you had all the young people, all the children in there. We thought it'd be a super spreader event. It turned out to be just the opposite. So we know a lot more now than we knew then. But uh, teachers, all the professionals, those in transit, those working in grocery stores, uh, all sorts of occupations and people that, we, that are, are vital, we're all connected in one way or another. Again, our goal is not to put one ahead of the other except for the elderly who are the ones who will die if they do not get a, a vaccine, who may die. We are not going to put a younger, healthier person ahead of an older person who is subject to getting the virus and dying in this process. We must take care and protect those who are most vulnerable first. But again, as I answered, our goal is to have our system in South Carolina working so fast and so well that there won't be any lines, that you'll be able to just go through and get those shots when, you, when you're ready. On older people, are we planning on changing any of the rules from navigating nursing homes right now, anything related to opening them back up? We're, try, we're trying to do that, and we're running into complications with the rules from CDC and C, CMS. Uh, that has been a concern from the beginning. Uh, the rule now requires uh, no visitation if the uh, rate, the infection rate is a, a certain percent uh, and depends on how you count that rate. But it looks to us like it's, it's below 10 percent in these areas. It looks to the people in Washington as though it's above it. So we're working hard with that. But there, we do have a, a compassionate uh, exception if for particular reasons. If there is a, a case that demands visitation, that can be done right now uh, through DHEC. But the visitation is something that has, has been a, a challenge and we have worried about it and we are, I can promise you, we, we frankly, we don't understand the, the federal government regulations that are causing our people not to be able to visit their young ones, particularly since the, in the nursing homes, long-term care facilities, uh, they're about to all get vaccinated, everyone in there that, that wanted to vaccinate. So we're working on that. It's been a it's been a concern of ours from the very beginning. Well, you, you, there, there are legal complications for that. That's, that's one of the questions, and we've been given two clear answers. One is yes, and the other is no. So that's, that's where we are on that. But it, it, we are dealing, talking to the nursing homes themselves. There's questions of liability if someone makes an error. There are a lot of questions that go into it, but the People in the nursing homes have been isolated from their loved ones for too long, and we've been battling to, to get this opened up safely, and I think we're on the edge of getting it done. Governor, I think there's a lot of still hesitancy and doubt about the vaccine itself. A message to people who are still unsure whether they want to get the vaccine or not because they simply don't trust what's in the vaccine at the end of the day. Well, there are a lot of people who don't, don't like shots. A lot of people that don't, just don't like medicine. And for reasons of their own, and some well documented, and, and some that are uh, hypothetical. But what we want to we want to do is everyone who wants a shot, we want to have them be able to get it quickly, not have to wait very long. And what we think is that after some who are hesitant see the success here as well as in other countries, as well as in other states, maybe they will decide they want to take the vaccine. We're not going to make anybody take it, but we want to have it available quickly and easily, comfortably for everybody who wants it. Two more questions at the last. Governor, today the former CEO of Scanna is going to federal court and then state court. Talk about their situation as you can and, and what it means to hold, hold those accountable for that D.C. summer debacle that would happen. Well, all, all those cases have gone through the court system. Uh, that's what the court system is for. Uh, all the, it's been written about and explained. Uh, we hate to see anyone get in trouble, but we know sometimes people do. And on a recent um, CDC study that was released based out of Georgia relating to um, different clusters that they found in schools around the state of Georgia, they did find that while some schools used all the proper mitigation efforts, um, some didn't, and in both those cases, teachers were part of the reason that there were clusters in school, again, leading to quarantines, misbehaves, issues with substitutes. I spoke to a principal last week who had to fill in in a class with distractions. Um, what can we do right now just to make sure that's... 
We, we have done that in South Carolina. We've offered all the support. And hundreds of millions of dollars have gone out to our 79 school districts, all that, who asked for help or needed help. We have PPE you know, stored up, millions, millions of, of gloves, gowns, all of that available for free for the schools. But the study you're talking about, I, I believe, is one that shows that spread did not come from the students to the teachers, which is exactly what we saw with a similar study in, in Charleston with 38,000 students. Students. It didn't go from the students to the teachers. That's what we were afraid of back in January, February, and March. It, it didn't happen. The teachers, people working in schools, just like those working any any place else, they have to be careful of their contact uh, with with their co-workers. This is it's not unusual. This this is how it gets spread. It's among adults, but again, everyone is facing that same challenge.